Epilogue, where the adventure begins anew. All the Adventure Guild teams, or what remained of them, gathered in the entrance hall like usually. Most of the mess caused by the great battle a week prior was tidied up, construction works to renovate and to expand the HQ were still in the making. Since Hilarious left and Gengolf took over, the morning briefing had been more relaxing since the time before Hilarious. The only other things that changed since Charlotte left was Aaron. He not only switched team from purple to blue, he was coincidentally diagnosed with farsightedness and was forced by Gengolf and Heidi to wear special goggles now when he was adventuring. Thick, black goggles. At first he was ashamed of it, but his teammates encouraged him. In the end he wore them with pride, making him look like a special agent. Before I sent you all out, I have an announcement to make, Gengolf said to the teams. I had a talk with Officer Magnezone. Because we are so few and some of the former forces members seem to have had a change of heart, some will soon join our ranks as adventurer. Mumbling across the teams. Some were not sure what so think about it. We will have three new recruits, and they will be under constant surveillance by the police, at least for the coming weeks. I want you to show them respect, when they arrive. That's all. With that, the briefing was over. While all the teams hurried up to prepare for today's adventuring, Amy was still depressed about what happened the week ago. Seeing her this sad always made Aaron sad as well, and it also affected Steve, who always tried to keep her in mood. Naya, Richard and Aaron went outside to the newly constructed board, looking for new missions. How about this? Gryfloon stuck in Murky Cave? Aaron suggested. You know that dungeon is filled with poison-type Pokémon? Nye pointed out. Aaron though trough it and searched for something else. Excuse me, this is the Adventurer Guild? A young but gentle voice behind them asked. Team Blue turned around and saw another group of three Pokémon standing behind them. A Morpico, a Tyrog and a weird-looking Corsola. In comparison to other Corsola, this one was pale with had an emotionless, empty expression on its face and was, for some reason, floating slightly above the ground. Can we help you? Naya asked and was more fixed on the core sola. He he oh how he hui ho hu mu mahe? The Tyrog said. No one understood what he just said. Sorry, said Richard. He said, we heard you are looking for new members, and we would like to join. The Morpico answered. Aaron? Naya said to him. Go and bring them to Gengolf, Richard and I will look for a decent mission. Aaron lead the group inside, with the core sola slacking behind. You okay? Richard asked it as it floated by him. The core solo slowly turned to Richard and Naya. It's always raining in my mind, have a nice day, it said and followed inside. Naya and Richard were both confused. Blimey. Richard exclaimed. Inside, Gengolf was just discussing something with all phones when Aaron arrived with the applicants. Mr. Guildmaster, sir. We have guests who would like to join us. Aaron said and interrupted their conversation. Seeing the three for the first time, Gengolf began to have a bad feeling about them. I did not know why, at first. While Aaron was sent out to his team again. Gengolf and Alphones invited the group to the guild master's room, now belonging to Gengolf, of course. So, you want to join the adventurer's guild? He said as they arrived. Yes, sir. Morpico answered happily. First of all, we are civilized Pokémon, so we first introduce each other. Gengolf told them. My name is Ten, like the number. The Morpico introduced himself. This is my best friend, Supin. He pointed at the core Sola, looking at all phones with empty eyes. And Ten looked over to the Tyrog, but did not know what to say next. What was your name again? Who a you? The Tyrog said. What? Gengolf asked. Who a you? The Tyrog shouted annoyed. His name is Sapoku. Supin answered. Ha ho hi he? The Tyrog argued. Do you have something in your mouth? Gengolf asked him. The opposite. 
he got to know tongue, Ten said. Sopoku opened his mouth in response. Where there is normally one, there was nothing. I'm sorry. So, and what brings you here? Gengolf asked them. For what reason did you want to join us? I heard stories about your nice guild, especially after what happened the past month, so I want to make myself a name. Ten explained. And Supin is here because she and I are friends and always together. Supin cited. And Sopoku here had an older brother who once was an adventurer at your guild and he wants to step in his footsteps. The Tyrog nodded to this. I don't want to be rude now, but, Ten looked worried. Is it possible to have a little snack now? An apple would be alright for me. Gengolf and Alphones looked at the Morpico. Alphones tilted his head. I already had breakfast and I usually have something in my pockets, but I just noticed I kind of ran out. Ten laughed and began scratching his neck. We only serve dinner. At 6 to 7 p.m., depending on the teams. Alphones told him. Can't you make an exception? For me? Just once? Ten asked and was slowly getting nervous. After the next step and after we have decided if you will join our guild or not, then we can talk about eating. Gengolf told them and was finding Ten's behavior rather impolite. Ten began to grin nervously and scratched his neck even harder. And what is the next step? Supin asked, sounding uninterested. I need to know if you three are strong enough to survive your missions. For that I want you to fight me. Hanaflahi ohawahohiha? Sopoku asked. Suddenly, a strange rumbling sound was heard by all present in the room. What was that? Alphones asked. The sound came from Ten, or rather his belly. Ten started to tremble and his pupils were getting smaller and smaller. You said we have to fight you to get accepted? Supin asked and then looked over to Alphones. You better step aside. This will get ugly. Ten's yellow fur slowly turned into an eerie purple and his eyes began to glow bright red. The polite smile he had minutes before was now gone and replaced with a face of pure anger. Hen? Ha ho? Sopoku asked. Give me something to eat, rock face. Ten shouted and out of nowhere jumped at the golem and bit in his hand. Gengolf yelped in pain and tried to shake him off while Alphones stood there and shook and stepped away from the scene. Sopoku ran to them both and managed to get more Pico off his hand. Ha hu he he? Sopoku asked Ten as he held him and struggled to keep it that way. Enough fighting power, Mr. Guildmaster? Supin asked Gengolf, who had his hand that was bitten in his mouth. Before Gengolf or Alphones could say something, Ten broke loose of the Tyrog's grip, turned around while his right arm began to glow a bright yellow and hit Sopoku right across the face with it. Lighting sparkled around them as it happened and Sopoku was struck to the ground. He's only like this when he hasn't eaten in a while, Supin assured the guild master and his assistant. Ten wants apple. Ten shouted, turned around to give the core Sola the same treatment he had given Sopoku before. Just in time Supin summoned a glowing shield that covered her body and protected her from the damage that Ten's thunder punch may have caused. The door of the guild master's room slammed open. There stood Team Orange, who rushed to them after hearing all that noise. What's going on? Hilarious too. Asked as they all saw the mess Ten was causing. Ten quickly turned his head to them and hissed like a wild animal, in a similar way Mo did. This sight startled the three Ponyard. Seeing Hilarious too, Carrying the team bag, Ten rushed and assaulted the leader of Team Orange. Neither him or his brothers had time to react. He fell down and Ten was tugging at his bag. Get it off me. Get it off me. Hilarious too, Screamed while his brothers struggled to do so. Ten managed to open the bag threw out a few items, while searching and finally found a normal-sized, red apple. Right then, Publius managed to throw the Morpico away, who still held the apple. He landed in front of the guild master's feet. Like his life was on the line Ten began to eat the apple like a maniac, 
as the others, except Supin, watched in horror. Never have they seen such a small Pokémon eat something so fast. Having almost devoured the whole apple, Ten's fur changed back from purple to his normal self and the anger in his eyes disappeared like it appeared. Ten moaned in relief. I needed that. Ten said and turned around to the guild master. He stood over him, holding the finger Ten bit into and giving him a grudging look. Ten blushed. This is always too embarrassing when it happens. Sapoku stood up. Ha he he hi ho ho hi hu. He complained. Gengolf looked up, his face was getting pale and he started into the distance, like he realized something terrible. All phones? He asked the delivered. Our new applicants are one with aggression problems, one who is weird, and one who can't talk properly. Did we fail the test? Ten answered, being friendly and polite again. Gengolf looked to him. No, you have passed. All three, he said. This took everyone else by surprise. While it was a joyous surprise to Ten, Supin and Sapoku, it was shocking to Alphonse and Team Orange. Why? Alphonse asked the guild master, trying not to sound rude. It's either a curse or a tradition, I guess. The golem told him. He walked to the door. Excused Team Orange and closed it in front of them. I don't understand, Alphonse said. Next to him the three other Pokémon gathered, also not understanding the Guild Master's decision. An aggressive one, a weird one, and one who can't talk right. This happened to us three times already. And now for the fourth time. Gengolf explained and pulled out a wooden boy from a shelf. Normally the color we would have given to the next team in line was yellow, but this is a special case, he said. He opened the box to the three soon-to-be adventures and presented them three purple-colored scarves. But this is another story. Mm -hmm.